Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Miss Benita and I'm helping out my Denver friend Miss Fun make these videos for you about the unit changing landforms. We're in the fourth chapter, third lesson, and this is broken up into three parts. All right, so let's get started. Making models of streams. In the last lesson, we used a sand model to investigate the idea that loose materials affect how fast a landform erodes. We also took a look at this book, Making Models of Streams. We introduced scientist Chris and how she uses models to study streams. In this lesson, we will build on our understanding that scientists make models to answer questions about the real world. All right, this activity, we will set up the reading of the book. And the second video in this lesson is the reading of the book. We'll use the pictures in this book to think about the similarities and differences between the stream model and, the re and a real stream, okay? You will find numbered questions in your packet. And remember, if you don't have the packet, any piece of paper, as long as you have something to write with, is all you need. You can also answer the questions by writing them down, talking to someone, a family member perhaps, or thinking about them in your head. All right, let's get started. What ideas do you have about model streams and real streams? Go ahead and pause the video and take a look at the questions in the packet if you have them and jot down some of your ideas. We'll be re we will be visiting these questions together. All right, let's take a look. What ideas do you have about model streams and real streams? Some of you said, model streams are what scientists make to study streams and what might happen over longer periods of time. A real stream can only be studied for a much shorter time span. Okay. I'll read the first few pages of this book. Let me get that going here. Chris Chifani has always loved water. When she was a kid, her yard had a stream in it. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool, huh? She played in the stream. Chris says, I loved putting rocks in the stream. I could change how the water flowed. Today, Chris Chafrani is a water scientist. Like all scientists, Chris asks questions. Many of her questions are about streams. Chris asks questions like, when there is less rain, what happens to streams? How do roads and buildings affect streams? How do streams change during floods? Do you live near a stream? Do you know where there's a stream nearby? Chris doesn't just ask questions, she figures out the answers too. One way she does this is by observing streams. She looks at the streams carefully and notices how they change. She measures how much water flows in the stream. She observes the rocks, sand, and soil in the stream bed. Observations can help scientists answer their questions. Chris makes observations of the rock, sand, and soil in real stream beds to help her answer questions about how streams work. Scientists have another way of figuring things out. They can make models. This photo shows a model that Chris made. The model represents a stream. It's a wooden box filled with plastic sand. It has a hose for pouring water over the sand. The water flows over the sand like a stream flows over the land. That rhymes. Chris teaches young scientists. She and the young scientists use this model to investigate questions about streams. Here's another question for you. How is the stream model similar to a real stream? Okay, some of you said 
The model represents the stream. The water flows over the sand like stream flows over the land. Picked up on that rhyme, did you? All right, page six. The young scientists want to study floods. In a flood, lots of water flows through a stream. The scientists think that a flood erodes a stream bed and changes its shape. They don't know exactly how the stream changes, though. They want to investigate this question. How does a stream bed erode during a flood? They can't investigate this question in a real stream. They might have to wait years for a real flood to happen. Instead, they can investigate with a model. Remember, scientists create models when they can't investigate the real thing. So I'd like you to read the rest of the book. Remember, it's the part two in the videos for this lesson, for lesson four. You can also try to view the reading video inside of this video by choosing this YouTube link. See you in a bit. All right, welcome back. Let's look back at an important science word from this book, scale. I will read from this page that has the word scale. Models don't have to be exactly this, like the real thing. A model can be different in ways that make it easier to investigate. One important difference is the scale of the model. Real streams are big, but the model is small. It can fit in a room. Using a model that is similar, using a model that is smaller than a real stream makes it easier to investigate. I'm kind of visualizing the the size of the stream and how you would bring that to scale inside of a room. We've been thinking about scale is how big or small something is. Geologists also use scale to investigate how fast or slow events happen. As geologists, we will continue to think about scale, both for size and for time. Let's punctuate this vocabulary word scale. How big or small something is, or how fast or slow events happen. What is another example of scale from the book? All right, some of you chose page 11. To represent the stream bed, scientists use plastic sand. The pieces of plastic sand are smaller and lighter than real sand. The plastic sand is the right scale for the small model. The water in the model isn't powerful enough to erode real sand. It can erode light plastic sand though. So here we're trying to recreate the action of a stream by using water that flows lightly and sand that's plastic. Okay. In this lesson, we learned that models can help us visualize how something happens and can provide evidence to help answer questions about how the real world works. In the next lesson, we will gather together our different pieces of evidence to help us explain how landforms can erode quickly. Well, I will see you for part three of this lesson. Bye for now. Hi everyone, welcome back to part three of the third lesson in chapter four, Changing Landforms. We're continuing to make sense of models of streams. In the last lesson, we read the book, Making Models of Streams. We visualize how models of streams help us to study the real ones. In this lesson, we will gather together our different pieces of evidence to help us explain how land forms can erode quickly. This video has two activities. If you have your packet handy, that is wonderful. And if you don't, remember any paper and a writing utensil will do just fine. We've been investigating how land forms erode quickly to figure out if the Recreation Center's cliff could erode as quickly as the nearby cliff. 
Today, we'll organize our evidence so we're ready to explain our thinking about the cliffs. Remember, we've been thinking about scale, which can refer to the amount of time it takes for something to happen. We've investigated both landforms that erode very slowly and those that erode more quickly. So turn to this page in your packet, Evidence for How Landforms Erode Quickly chart. Let's review the directions. We completed a similar chart at the end of Chapter 3. So we are reviewing these three activities that have taken place in the videos. The reading of the Handbook of Land and Water, the demonstration in the video of the sand model, and we watched a video inside of a video of the wind erosion model. We will, we will record evidence from each of these activities in the chart on the right hand side. You can look at the models and refer to the reference book and your packet pages. So this might be a good place to pause the, the video and go back to those resources of yours. I'll see you in a bit. All right, welcome back. Let's share some of the evidence that we've gathered from these three resources. Now remember, your evidence may not look like somebody else's, but that's okay. As long as they've come from these three uh, sources, that's what's important. The idea here is that wind and water can erode a landform quickly if the landform is made of loose materials. So that's what we'll, we will be looking for. Let's see what some of you had to say. From the book, beaches can erode quickly because they are made of sand and other loose materials. Some of you chose to look at the wind. Wind can carry away huge amounts of sand in a single day. Others of you looked at a valley. A valley made of loose materials erodes quickly. We'll put a part of that right here. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Investigating the sand model. Let's see what some of you had to say. The sand moved a lot when I sprayed it with water and the chalk didn't move very much. This is because sand is a loose material and chalk isn't. When I sprayed the sand with water, it eroded quickly. Okay, let's put a little bit of that here. And our third activity was watching the sand model with the wind. Yeah, the wind model. The sand moved when the teacher blew on it with a straw. Some of you might have written about seeing the sand flow over the hump as it created that little dip in it, what we call a divot. We'll put that right here. Some of you discussed evidence about wind eroding landforms, while others focused on water. Some of us talked about evidence of landforms with cracks eroding quickly, while others focused on the loose materials. This is all important information to consider when we write our explanations. All right, our last activity, we're gonna build on these ideas. Now, if you have a, a family member available, this would be a great opportunity to have them join you. You've done this activity perhaps in your classroom, building on ideas. So your family member can be your partner. You have these, what we call sentence stems, in your packet as well. And if you don't have the packet, go ahead and pause the video so you'll have, so you can use these sentence stems to talk to each other about your ideas about th this question. How are landforms that erode quickly and landforms that erode slowly, similar. All right, let's take a look at what some of you might have said during your exchange, your conversation. All landforms are made of some type of rock. They both erode, okay? What about the second question? How can you tell if a landform will erode quickly or slowly? Pause the video if you haven't had a chance to ask your partner this question or to jot down your own thinking. 
So let's see what you might have written down or talked about. Solid rock erodes slowly while more loose rock or rocks with a lot of cracks can erode quickly. We are approaching a key concept here. Let's pause and really think about this. Wind and water can erode a landform quickly if the landform is made of loose materials. When we first read this book, we were just learning what a landform is. Landform postcards about Annie and her trip. Now we'll review the photos to decide whether the landforms could erode quickly or slowly. I'll start by showing you an example of page eight mesas here. These mesas are, are made of rock and the text says, Mesas are made out of red, orange, and yellow rock. This is what Annie wrote down to her, her grandpa. These mesas look like they are made of hard, solid rock. It would take a long time for wind or water to erose, erode these landforms. Let's look for other examples. Go ahead and pause the, the video and find some for yourself. You can return to this video of the reading from chapter one by selecting this YouTube link. Okay, see you in a bit. All right, let's share our ideas and then make sure that we support our ideas with evidence. Some of you landed on page six, the plains. Annie writes, I remember that landforms are made of rock I pictured rock under the grass in the plains. That was neat to think about. So if there's rock under all of this flatness here, would that rock be uh, eroding quickly or slowly? What do you think? Yeah, slowly. Let's take a look at page 16. We walked all the way out into a peninsula. I could see the water on both sides of us, Annie writes to her grandpa. So this is a peninsula here, and here's the other peninsula, and there's water all around it. So do you think this, uh, these peninsulas erode quickly or slowly? Yeah, quickly. In fact, I'm wondering if these two peninsulas were connected together at one point and the water actually eroded it from both sides. In this lesson, we gather different pieces of evidence to help us explain how landforms can erode quickly. In the next lesson, we'll create diagrams and write explanations about why the nearby cliff eroded overnight. So until then, take care. Bye for now.